you represent. Proceed with your testimony today. Chairman King, thank you so much. My name is Mark Vega. I am the general manager of the Town Public Utility. I've been in the city of McAllen for almost 20 years. February will be 20 years. Um, so thank you so much for having us here, uh, Chairman King. Senator Lopez said thank you so much. I know Mr. Guerra and Vanellas, I believe, stepped out. But all committee members, thank you so much. So uh, I, I'll start quickly by just making a few points, and then I'm going to pivot uh, to clarify some statements that were previously made by Mr. Brand. Um, so first of all, I want to make four points. Number one, our relationship with District 3. Number two, the rates with District 3, because I think there was some confusion there. Um, number three, the necessity for the district. And number four, stewardship. Because that's what we do, and that's our business. So, uh, having said that, the first, the first is relationships. Um, I am one of eight children, so my father started a small roofing company in 1965, just one employee. No contracts, a third grade education from a small ranch in Mexico. Chinango is what it's called, the city. Came here and did very well in roofing, residential roofing. Couldn't do commercial roofing, but I saw how he related with his customers. And I learned that very well. Extremely good relationships that he built in 25 years in our community. Now, why do I say that? Um, I've been in the city for the McCown Public Utility for 20 years, and I have seen a tremendously adversarial relationship in 20 years. I can give you examples, and I will, I will shortly, I'll give you examples. I'm not gonna keep this too long. I just wanna get those points. However, uh, and when I say examples, I will give you a real world example, like as in this morning uh, from an email. So please remind me if I had skipped that. However, uh, I thought I was better versed in utility and orders uh, before Mr. Brand spoke, and I'm a little confused myself. But I will tell you things that I do know, okay? Let me first start with the words that he said. Um, the district was formed for agricultural purposes. That's true and that's great. I challenge you all to look at the boundaries of the district on a Google Earth map. Just look at it and tell me if the purpose that he stated is still valid. He also said the people in Hidalgo County, Hidalgo County is at about 1 million people now. McGowan is probably about 20% maybe about 20% population of the county. So 20% of the county more or less live in the county and the district boundaries are right smack dab in the middle of the county. Com almost completely urbanized, which goes to his point that it was formed for agricultural purposes. Uh, he also said something else. He said, we save them money, time, and infrastructure. So, Mr. Brand invited me to a District 3 meeting, which I was very appreciative of. Usually, we don't get to say um, if there's any business, it's, it, it goes, they go into executive session, but he allowed me to present in their district meeting, which I was, again, I was very appreciative of. I showed them, I made a simple chart on napkin, and I showed it to their whole, all their board members. Very similar to this. I should have brought it with me, but it was almost identical to this. We have four sources of water, District 1, District 2, United Irrigation District, and number three. And by the way, going back to my first point in relationships, I think most, if not all, those district managers are here in the room. We had great relationships with them. Never had real issues with any of them. Um, 
in all names, Sunny at District 2, Sunny Mabosa, uh, Rusty McDaniel at District 1, Juan Martinez United Irrigation District, and of course, Oakland Brand District 3. Saves them money, time, and infrastructure. I don't know how you say that when the average of the other three districts, the average cost of water delivery is $60 an acre foot. United, District 1, District 2. $60 an acre foot average. District 3 delivers at $113.96. We call it $114, it's four cents off of, uh, per acre foot. So $113.96. How that saves us money is beyond me. I can't make sense of that. Um, also, And forgive me because I had to pivot a little bit from my regular speech. However, uh, time. So the permitting process with District 3, I don't know how, how that saves us time. Uh, it, it's a lengthy permitting process. The fees for that permitting process have increased significantly. Uh, I want to say just to apply now is $750 just for the application. And then crossing fees is also another issue that they implemented some, some time back. Uh, infrastructure, how that saves us in infrastructure, I do not know. However, he also brought up the flood of 2010 and how many improvements that he's made to that district and that costs money. That was one of the questions I believe the Senator had. No other district in that flood or the freeze of last year stopped delivering water, none. So I know that he makes those points to justify that rate Nobody has stopped delivering water to us, and they didn't in the districts behind me, both in the flood and the freeze. So I just wanted to clarify that. Uh, because he said that we raised the pump station and installed generators. That was what he said when I was at that district meeting to justify the rates because I asked. I showed him again this napkin. I said, how do you justify that? It's the same water from the other districts. For us, my fourth point of stewardship, the day that we forget that we're using other people's money and we're stewards of water and that resource, we're going downhill fast. We could go buy a new fleet for all of our departments, we could go buy new computers and justify a rate increase. But is that the wisest way to use your resources? Because nobody else has those generators and their pumps and picking up their, their pump stations by the foot and all that extra equipment and they never fail to deliver water to us. It's about stewardship for us. Let me go back um, a little bit. So he claimed to have 23 farmers and 5,000 acres. I think that's good. Somebody might have asked. All of that, what does that translate into, into how much you actually irrigate? What's the volume that you actually irrigate? Because you can have 100 farmers and irrigate very little water. And so that's something that I think should be looked into. Um, one of his main points was, if it happens to us, it can happen to anybody else. I don't know if that's true or not. Maybe this committee and the legislature is in charge of those questions. But we are talking about not saving our community money or time or infrastructure. By the way, their district, which I, you know, somebody did call out the right name, but they used to be Mutual Irrigation Company before 1921. And this is out of their own letter, which was from back in the 60s. In 1921, however, the Mutual Irrigation Company passed out of existence to become Hidalgo County Water Improvement District Number 3. Things serve a purpose for a time. That's just a natural progression, especially for a growing city like McAllen and a growing town like Hidalgo County. Because you existed 100 years ago doesn't mean you should exist 100 or 200 or 300 years later. In my opinion. Um, 
So I just want to make that very clear. I don't want any confusion about that, and I'll repeat it. Hidalgo County Irrigation District Number One, sixty-two dollars an acre foot. Hidalgo County Irrigation District Number Two, fifty-one dollars and twenty-six cents an acre foot. District Three, one hundred thirteen dollars and ninety-six cents. United Irrigation District, sixty-five dollars. Um, I just, I heard some confusion about that. I have pictures of actual invoices. Two that they put the text in. Invoices where we ordered water at the rate of $113.96. So I just don't want any confusion about the rates. Uh, relationships, that's hard. I mean, you all ask for facts, but I'll give you a fact that we have dealt with. I know I've, I've been meeting at the Town Public Utility for 20 years. Uh, and I'll give you, this is an email that came in today. This director didn't even know that this was going on. He's our IT director, for heaven's sakes. Um, this is our, our, the city's IT director. Uh, an email to the city attorney's office. Vexus is leasing our conduit throughout the city so they can install their fiber in our conduit. Oakland's Irrigation District is not allowing Vexus to utilize our existing conduit that runs through his district. The irrigation is stating every cable we install in our existing conduit requires a new permit. Let me repeat that. The irrigation, I think you meant district, the irrigation is stating every cable we install in our existing conduit requires a new permit. Can you validate this information for me? Vexus is now on hold and needs to resume installing cable ASAP. Do you know how long that would take for every single um, every cable to require a permit? Is that something new to us? No, that's not shocking. Um, many, many projects that we have put in conflict with District 3 are the same way. I remember one of the first instances that I had, or, or not instances, but interactions I had with the district was a meeting back with the general manager. This was probably 2006, 2007. I wasn't the general manager, I was the assistant general manager at the time. And I had met with Oli, I believe it was in his office, and, and Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Brand. And he had stated, unless, until we get this contract resolved and signed, we will not deliver a drop of water. And I thought, okay, but I guess that's policy. I went back and had a discussion with our general manager, who's now our city manager, and I said, uh, you know what, they need this contract signed or else we don't get water. Me, I just, very naive, uh, and, boy, and our city manager says, he would do that? He would not deliver any water and put the city on standstill until a contract is signed? I don't know. That's a good question. However, um, that's, those are the types of relationships that we've had. You want to cross the pipe? We want a title report for that property that you're going to cross on. We want a survey. Um, the application obviously has to be completed. Meets and bounds along with that title report or you don't cross. A simple phone call, if it's your own city, to say, hey, look, um, this is a requirement. Maybe we can work through this as you get this information you guys can cross or whatever it is. Does it happen? I don't know. It just doesn't happen. So, and, and many, there's many, many examples. I'm not gonna get too far into the elections. I think our, our the, the next um, person testifying is, is going to elaborate on that. Thank God. Um, but this Senate Bill 2185, and what was required, I'm not gonna go into all the points. I think you just heard those points. But you all look at www.hcwid.com and you all judge for yourselves if all of those points are met. Anybody can go on that website. 
I also want to talk about the budget that is now on that website, which is good. Their budget's now on the website. I actually have it here, um, all five pages of it. However, I do want to make one point, or maybe two points. They have a $2.2 million budget. And so someone asked a question about the percentage of revenue from the city of John. In that $2.2 million budget, they have $450,000 of surplus land and $125,000 of surplus equipment. That's $575,000. I don't know of anybody that creates a budget and counts land that they may sell or equipment that they may sell as revenue. So take that out and we are 93 or 94% of their revenue. Number two, um, further down, I just, there's very few line items that make up their revenues. And I'll just share with you quickly what makes up that 2.2 million. Flat rate connections, 48,000. Water sales, of course, to the county, 1.6, that's our contract, $1.6 million. Other 7,500 non-operating revenue, $577,000. That 577,000, like I just said, is surplus of land, which is almost half a million, surplus of equipment, and their expenses, on, on the expense side, I'm sorry, there's a line item for extraordinary expenses, extraordinary expenses, $580,000. So out of that 2.2 million, 580,000 is extraordinary expenses. What is extraordinary expenses? Legal fees, $500,000. Half a million dollars. This is in their budget that you can get on, on the website. Governmental affairs, I believe is a lot of this, $80,000. So that's $580,000 for an irrigation district with a handful of farmers. Um, I go back to that. We take stewardship very seriously. And I seem to hear a recurring theme that only they can do this well, only they can do that well, only they can, and, and I'm not, I, I don't know about elections, or the other uh, point that he made that they could do well, I forget what that one was, but about sending water to, uh, delivering water to farmers. He said they can't run it as efficient as we do. We provide water, the population of McGowan is probably 160 plus thousand people. The people that actually work there or play there daily, weekends, is probably over 200,000. We treat their water, and we are a superior water system by TCQ standards. For hospitals, schools, 165,000 residents, um, and we can't deliver water to a few farmers. We have water labs, wastewater labs, finance department, engineering department, a building department, a customer service department, wastewater collections, transmission distribution, but we cannot deliver raw water, what's called raw water, to a few farmers. I take those things personally, So, um, but anyhow, please look, look at the website and, and if you all think that that met those points, okay. Um, my last point that I wanted to make is we work extremely hard. And I say we because we have 244 employees that make up McGowan Public Utility. I think they're the best employees in the state. I really do. Have we ever dealt in delivering raw water? No. But if we were to take over the district, we would use the exact same staff they do. 
the exact same staff. I don't think Mr. Brand is out at the pump station for opening and closing gates. His staff does. That we can't take care of those farmers' uh, needs. But, but it's just, it, that's hard to hear. It really, really is considering what our 244 employees do every single day. Not only for water, but for wastewater. Um, I wanted to make those points, committee members. I'll skip over the whole um, issues that are or questions or, or points that I had having to do with the election. But I did want to mention those points. And I'm going to leave it there. I'll leave it there. And I just want to make sure that there's no confusion about their rate. That is double the cost of the average of the other districts. Double the cost. Same water. And like I said, going back to my father, knowing that your customers is how you make your livelihood, to treat those customers the way that we're treated is just, I mean, 94% of the revenue it is unconscionable. And I'll leave it at that. And I'll take on that. Sure. Take any questions that you might have. Thank you. Representative Guetta had his hand up first. Do you have a, an estimate of what it would cost the city of McAllen as opposed to this water district? I, I can only go by their budget. No, but I was talking about if you were to run. Right, that, that's what I mean. By their budget, their operational expenses? Yes. Obviously, we wouldn't have five, about half a million dollars in legal fees. Um, the rest of, of operations is about $1.6 million, if, I'm, if this is correct. Uh, so yes, we, we, do have, we do have an idea and we would be absolutely willing to take that on. So, so that's a cost saving? It could very well be, could very well be. Very good, thank you. I have a couple questions for me. Senator Daniel Wilson. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, from listening to your testimony, uh, and you heard what uh, other witnesses have testified to, Seems like uh, Water District Number Three is within ninety percent of the city limits of uh, City of McAllen. Yes, I would say so. Uh, and then the testimony has been that ninety percent of the revenue that Water District Number Three um, generates uh, is uh, from the City of McAllen. Correct. Uh, and um, they now the. The amount of work they do for farmers is actually very small. I I believe someone asked them that question, Senator. I don't, I might have stepped out. I don't recall the exact volume that he said. But in comparison to what they did to us, yes, very small. So uh, it, it seems uh, to me, uh, and pretty obvious, that one of those things we no longer serves the purpose for which it was created, and that is to serve uh, mostly agriculture and farmers. We believe so. Uh, and they are doing now um, the cost, and uh, they overcharge compared to other water districts uh, almost twice as much. Uh, is that, from your, from your experience, that, that seems to be the only way they can survive by overcharging? It seems so. It seems that way, Senator. So, who pays that overcharge? The taxpayers of City of McAllen and uh, the water? Uh, users in McAllen? That's, that's a great point, and, and the answer is yes. So they just increased the rate last year to the $113.96 new rate. It used to be $97, which was high even with that. That's that equals to $250,000 increase in that expense, that line item expense of raw water. Um, that's very difficult to swallow. We had to increase rates this year, I will say, not only because of that cost, but we talked about inflation, uh, which is one of the points that I, that I skipped, Senator. And he's right. A lot of things increased in costs, especially chemicals that we deal with to treat water. 
But you know what? Only one other district raised their rate due to inflation, and that was three cents per thousand. That was United Irrigation District. Uh, nowhere close to the 17% increase that they instituted on, on us. So the 90% of, of, of revenue that the city, or one district can agree, uh, gets from the city of McAllen, uh, and that's about what, 1.8 million? 1.6. 1.6 million? Uh, does that also include initial funding or payments for easements? Uh, I know there was, there'll be delay in some of the McAllen uh, construction projects uh, because of what the district would agree. Uh, that's, Senator, that's a good point. I think that is what reflects here in their budget as surplus land that they sell. That's my only guess, and they put that in their budget to the tune of half a million dollars. Uh, and at one dollars. point, uh, Bicentennial uh, construction all the way to 107 uh, was delayed because of disputes over easements with water districts in Madrid. That is correct. One thing that was not mentioned is in that project, Senator, the district funded a large diameter raw water line to extend from I want to say more or less uh, just north of Trenton Road, if you're familiar with McAllen. And the plan was to extend that large diameter raw water line all the way north of Monte Cristo. Their only 94% of their revenue comes from us. How else would they fund that project? District 1 said no, you cannot cross our, our district to serve our, our farmers, our customers. And that's in the courts, I believe, right now as we speak. So. That was funded. Um, they funded that pipeline all the way to the District 1 Canal, and it dies there. Bicentennial Roadway, thank God, it continued, and is now up to 107. So now uh, you, you mentioned the uh, legal piece. Yes, sir. Oh, half a million? Yes, sir. Uh, and that's uh, litigation uh, to fight the city of McAllen uh, on the disagreements. I'm, I'm going to assume so. Senator, legal is half a million dollars, government affairs is $80,000 for a total of $580,000. Uh, and then, uh, not to mention governmental affairs, lobbyists, and the Austin to be able to fight uh, against the city of McAllen. Right. So they're actually using uh, taxpayers' money from the city of McAllen to fight the city of McAllen, uh, what will be in the best interest of the citizens of McAllen. Correct. Thank you. Chairman Canales. Chairman, sure. <clears throat> we're touching on right now what you want to talk about is the legal piece. That's what they display to you, and we will take that at face value for the purpose of this conversation. What does the city of McAllen incur in legal fees because of all the situations and all the easements and all the surveys and all the things and architectural stuff that you said, uh, designs or whatever it is, bound meets and bounds, all those incidences that you're saying occur frequently? Yes, sir. What is, on average, what does those fees cost in McAllen? Gosh, Representative Granadas, I wish I could put a number to it. I know the legal department would know much better because that's where that right away acquisition department is housed in, in legal. And they have a much better idea. Whenever we get those charges, legal handles that because that's a right away acquisition or an easement acquisition. Um, you have, you have, a, you have a in house counsel? Yes, sir. Okay. But outside of that, you be meets and bounds and things of that nature. Do you all handle the meets and bounds and surveys? Uh, I, I believe small small acquisitions may be handled by our legal department, but for the most part, they have to be contracted out. So aside from the hit that the senator saying the taxpayer is taking the half a million that you're talking about for legal fees, we can assume because of the 90 something percent, equivalent over small percentages, but 90 something percent business comes from McAllen, let's just say 90% of those legal fees come from McAllen, then McAllen in and of itself has to take time, money and expenses from their in-house legal counsel and somehow also hire outside companies and or professional services. So basically the taxpayer is getting hit over the head twice. Yes, sir. Punch in the gut, so to speak. So you also said that the website, we talked about the requirement of the bill that was passed last session you directed us that y'all go look for yourselves. Well, my question to you is, did you look? Yes, sir. Okay, do you think they've complied? No, I don't. In what, in what respect have they not complied with the bill? Well, one of the important uh, points about that bill, we talked about contracts. 
contracts be on the website. You won't find a contract on the website. Um, their expenses, you have these very visible scanned images of checks. Um, the general manager, the general manager could not be the board chairman. Mr. Brand chose to stay as board chairman, that's fine. There's still no general manager for us to, to contact and deal with. They're operational folks. I believe he has two co-general managers that really don't have authority. So you're saying that they basically found a loophole to work around. Don't get the general manager, but let Mr. Brand run it as if he was the general manager without the title. It sounds like what representing friends. So you also mentioned inflation. Everybody agrees there's inflation. Um, but you mentioned that the biggest cause of inflation that affects your treatment, et cetera, were chemicals and stuff of that nature. Correct. They're just pumping water out of the river and delivering it. Right? Correct. 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 So they're not treating anything. No, sir. And you heard Mr. Brand testify to the committee that he runs a lean machine with a couple of people mowing the ditches and not too many employees. And so inflation at that point, I don't know where it's going to affect their business model, but it's not the same. When you said you've got all sorts of other things that you're having to purchase third party products, et cetera, you have huge inflation effects, but his is more of a labor effect. Uh, and would you say that that's pretty? I'd say that's, that's fair. I know one of our uh, components was also the increase was uh, energy. Uh, energy and electricity um, and fuel, diesel. That, that's absolutely, and I apologize for being that. I was trying to think of all the things that inflation could affect, and I happen to miss the one that's costing the most. Right, price. but there is a big difference. <coughs> Just so you know, Representative Canales, we have what's called high service pumps, 400 horsepower individual pumps that have to pressurize 800 miles of distribution system to 60 plus pounds per square inch. They don't deal in high pressure. Uh, high pressure pumps that way. They're called low lift pumps. And so, and then they depend on the canals for gravity to, uh, to deliver. So very different process. I'm glad you mentioned distribution because that's my next question. So Mr. Brand says that the difference between his prices and the prices of other providers are that they are only providing the raw water and he is also providing the distribution. Could that be the reason for the difference in cost? No. The other districts also distribute water. So when the districts, other districts that you've mentioned, whose costs are, and we'll verify it, and I don't have any reason to doubt you, don't have any reason to doubt Mr. Brand, but we are having a huge delta in prices. And Mr. Brand is saying that we're not comparing apples to apples, that we're comparing apples to oranges in that he is delivering, not only providing the commodity, which is the water. And so are the other people providing the distribution services? Yes. So are we compare when we compare prices for the sake of the committee's review of what's going on here in the heart of South Texas is, are we comparing apples to apples when we're comparing prices? For instance, another water district, $60 compared to Mr. Brand's 110, say. Are they providing the same exact service and commodity? Yes, sir, they are. Um, and just let me just add, the other three districts have been extremely reliable at delivering water to this. United Irrigation District, District 1, District 2 have been extremely reliable. How that's not apples to apples, it, it, it is beyond me. But they're also delivering. Yes, sir. They deliver to our reservoirs. And that's what Is there any them. difference in your mind, because I'm, I'm just trying to give everybody here the benefit of the doubt, is there any difference in your mind as to the delivery process of the water district number three and the delivery process of all the other providers in the city of McAllen? Just delivery, not the product, not the raw water. Is there any <coughs> in the service of delivery in your mind? Can you, for the committee, tell us what differences might exist? I can't tell you. Okay, are you can't tell me because you don't know or you can't tell me because they don't exist? I don't think they exist. How many acre feet of water rights the city of McGowan hold? About 38,000. How many acre feet do you get distributed from water WCID number three? 14,000. How many of those 14,000 do you own? Well, we actually own about 670 acre feet apart from the 14,000. The 14,000 acre feet are adjudicated only to us by contract. So we own about 670 acre feet apart from those 14,000. And those are our city water rights that we own. So the testimony has been that they own water rights also. I think the 
district owns water rights that were purchased years ago. I don't know that uh, Chairman King. I just know that the 14,000 acre feet are adjudicated only to us. They okay. cannot deliver those to anyone else. And so the testimony has been that 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 the $114 rate, uh, which is the most recent rate, I don't know what the most recent rates are in the other districts, is that that includes the delivery fee and the cost of the raw water. That's correct. And, and let me specify that quickly. So they have about a 10% loss factor. Other districts have higher, higher loss factors. So if we order 100 acre feet, they deliver 90. And they remove that 10% from, from your work. Um, and so that's the way they deliver water. So the other districts that deliver water to you, the fee that they charge you, is it the delivery fee? Yes, that's inclusive. If that's all, or, or does it include the raw water? That includes the raw water. So that's all inclusive. The the water that are they delivering? Your water rights? Does that go against your water rights that you hold at the city of McAllen? If we choose the only one we choose to use. So those rates So are, if how much water do you get from the other districts? Muscle members. Fourteen thousand acre feet from district three. Eight thousand acre feet from district two. 4,000 acre feet from District 1, and 11,000 acre feet from United Irrigation District. Okay, that's 23,000 acre feet. I believe if I was keeping up with it. No. 11, no, this 3. 11, 14 for District 3. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Oh, excluding, I'm sorry, so you're excluding uh, 19, 23, and then like you talked about, 2,000 acre feet from Brownsville Irrigation District, which we may choose or not choose to use. So apart so, from them, it is 23,000 acre feet. So when you get that 20,000 acre, let's just use 20,000 acre feet that you buy from those other districts, does that go against your bank of 38,000 acre feet that you own? Yes. Okay. When you buy the, was it 14,000? 14,000 acre feet. That you buy from number three. Yes. Does that 14,000 go against your bank of 38,000? Yes. And that, can I specify something, Chairman? Sure, yeah, I'm just trying to figure it out. What's know. a very important point in all of that discussion is take or pay contracts. That is 100% of the District 3 contract. So 14,000 acre feet is take or pay. We don't have a choice. If we use right. 10,000 acre feet, you're paying 14,000 acre feet. The other districts, like District 1, is not a take or pay contract. If we don't use a gallon of water, we don't pay. If we use one gallon of water, we pay for one gallon. District 2, 8,000 acre feet is half take or pay, 50%. 4,000 acre feet, we have to pay whether we use it or not. The other 4,000 acre feet is not take or pay. United Irrigation District, full take or pay, 11,000 acre feet. So his district, District 3, 14,000, is a take or pay contract. So the um, the loss factor, what is it in the other districts? You say it was 10%? They, number they three. Vary, and he is the lowest in the loss factor. Um, they go from 10% to 15%, 18%. They, it's different by district. Okay. And so the, the the money that they take in from the water fees, uh, presumably is reinvested in the system. Would you agree with that? Presumably, yes, sir. Uh, well, and legal fees. Um, yes. And, uh, and so that would be one of the reasons, obviously, that they have 10% loss factor versus a higher loss factor. 10%, right. Leakage, evaporation, canals aren't, they're not pipes, so they'll, they'll lose water. But well, yeah, most of it, you know, goes through the ground or anything. Right. So if they're concrete or whatever they've done, you know, to try to make it more efficient. So if you were running, if the city was running that district, why would you not have the half a million dollars in legal fees? Who, why would we, who would we pay? You said you would not have it. No. Why not? Who, who would we pay? Uh, people that were suing you? Are you since you hired? The city pays, well, the city currently has a legal fee bill. They have lobbyists working for them. Sure. That's if, right. If that would come up, I, I, I have a hard time imagining it'd be half a million dollars, but I, I'm not an attorney. I don't know what the charge is there. Well, what drives those legal fees? What initiates those legal fees? That's a question for Mr. Grant. I, 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 I don't know. How many lawsuits has the city of McAllen and your department filed against them? And how many rates?
rape cases that they forced on them? Don't know. That's you don't know? No. Yes, the legal department would know. Very well. I don't know. How many? Yes, sir. In, 20, in the time I've been there, 20 years? Yes, sir. I, that's an honest answer, Chairman King. I don't know how many lawsuits have been filed. Well, at least enough to incur half a million dollars worth of legal expenses. If you take their budget as face value, sure. Uh, yes, sir. And so how often do you require right-of-ways from other districts? How often do we require right-of-ways? The pipeline crossing, the fees for crossing, all of those types of things. Uh, that, that's, depending on the project, that could, that's happened many times. Well, we have to cross one of their district irrigation lines, yeah. and we need to prepare paperwork, et cetera. Okay. To get it, it, it's, it's not uncommon, I wouldn't think. No. Does it happen a lot more with number three since they're mostly in the city of McGowan? Does it happen more than the other districts? I don't know. That's a, a tough question because we get we have to cross all the districts for the right. Projects. And I don't know where they are, so right. that's why they're, they're in the heart of McAllen, Second Street to Bicentennial, north to south. And um, have we had to cross them? Yes, many times. Yeah. And so, what's it what's it crossing fee for a comparable apples to apples comparison in another district versus number three? Uh, that's a great question, Chairman. It used to be minimal. Back when I was about 2007, when we had our first, not our, not our first, first conflict that I was associated with, which was our new reservoir, uh, the district quickly implemented a $500 per inch crossing fee. During that project, by the way, $500 per, so we, and, and we do a large diameter pipe. In, in, in treatment, like a reservoir, a uh, 60 inch pipe. A 60 inch pipe crossing their line, their canal, a lateral, was $30,000 for one crossing. Yes, sir. And so, uh, I'm sorry, the question was to other districts? Yes, yeah, and what would comparable fee be in another district? The other districts did not have crossing fees like that until District 3 implemented those. Some, not all. And, and, I, and, and I may be uh, missed to say that some have actually revised that. But I know that some districts also implemented that later. So, at the heart of this issue, and there again, you know, I've, I've always been, it's not the legislature's place to decide how much people sell water for, no. whether it's a, a privately owned, uh, investor owned utility, or whether it's the city of McAllen, or whether it's uh, WCI number three or anything. Um, we can certainly be shocked at the rates, but it's not our job determine what the rate is. The rate is whatever it takes to deliver water. But consistently over the time that I've been in the legislature, this has been an ongoing issue in addition to the, the failure to communicate uh, in this particular case. And so somehow we've got to figure out why we can't get a straight answer on what the water costs. Because we're getting very different answers here. And I know you believe you're, you, and, and I'm certain that that WCID number three is confident in their numbers too. And we don't have to do it today in this meeting, but at some point, I, I would like to know what it is. There again, not that I'm in, I feel like we are, have a place to judge that, because it's not our right to determine water rates around the state, I don't think. But it is our right to at least get a straight answer when somebody asks us to come up here and change a district you know, over to another area. And, and so back to that, if, if the water district was dissolved, um, what happens to the water rights that they do own? We would hope that they would transfer those water rights to us. Okay. According to the law in, in Texas, and, and there again, since these are real good water rights, it may not be the same. But in Texas, when a district is dissolved, those water rights, surface water rights, river water rights, revert to the state of Texas because the state of Texas owns those surface water rights and thus they've been adjudicated at some point to the different districts. And we run into issues all over the state with water districts, typically on the lakes. You know, we have irrigation districts, LCRA, BMA, a bunch of them, they own a lake. And it's all great, they're farming the people. And then as the people start developing property around the lake, uh, all of a sudden they want a constant water level because of it. obviously the water tables go down and it affects the value of their property. And so we run into a similar argument over who owns the water in the lake. 
We see it on the Highland Lakes now. We see it in, in the Medina Lake, and it comes up. So this, this issue in other contexts is not uncommon, um, and, and the legislature gets asked to mediate them sometimes. But um, I, uh, and so obviously if you did it, you'd have to, you would need to look and see what happened to the five or 6,000 acre feet of water rights that they do own. And you may not need them, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know where they go on their international boundary. So for Germany, you, it could be different. For you, my readers, Chairman, but from the current testimony is that right now that wouldn't even matter because they're building against their allotted amount to begin with. So, so that's the testimony. That's the testimony. So even if they didn't transfer their water rights, he's saying that the amount that they received from Water District Number Three isn't taxed. They're taxed against what they're allotted. That, that's the testimony. Anyway, and I wasn't trying to be harsh with you. I'm just trying to. It's frustrating. I understand. I've got pictures of invoices if, if you want to see them. So um, that's all my questions. Anybody else? Um, Did you? Yes. Yes, sir. Chairman. Briefly. Um, talk a lot about litigation with them. Uh, what is number three? Tell them about litigation with other water districts you deal with. Is it the same? Is it more? Is it, are, they, are the other ones more litigious? Or is water district number three more litigious? How do you have more? What's what's the, what's the litigation climate with them and compared to the other districts? 20 years, uh, Representative Kramis, I, I do not know of any other litigation with any other three districts. Matter of fact, our district one contract was just, that's pretty, I say fairly recent, five, six, seven years old. Um, fantastic negotiating process on the water rights. And so, to answer your questions, you're with the other districts. Do, do you think that it would benefit um, if there was, there's all sorts of people love lawsuit reform in Austin. Uh, if there was some more a mandatory or a mandatory arbitration or a mandatory mediation instead of having to file litigation um, to try to help you resolve it and with, with districts, not just district number three in the future, any district that might have uh, doesn't work so amenable with the city, uh, that we could try to facilitate a more amicable dispute resolution process. Yes. Thank you. So we have an attorney on the record for mandatory arbitration. Reasons. <laughs> Anybody else? Do you have anything you want to add, Mr. Baker? Just to thank you all for, for, for holding this hearing and hearing this out. It's actually pretty fascinating, I think, you know, but you got to be in water like we are. So uh, it's, it's interesting. Thank you for coming today. You're welcome. Thank you. Chair